Rajeshwari MJ. She pursued her BE in Electrical and Electronics at the People's Education Society College of Engineering, Mandya. She pursued her M.Tech in VLSI Design and Embedded Systems at the Sri Jagadguru Balaganga Daranta Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Her personal skills lie in good verbal and written communication skills. Her areas of interest lie in OOPS with C++, Renewable Energy Sources, HVDC Transmission, Digital Relays, Automotive Electronics, Advances in VLSI Design. She has also had papers presented at the national level such as the innovative architecture for SOC multi core hybrid processor presented at the RNSIT Bangalore. Welcome to UGC lecture series of BSc Applied Electronics. Today we are dealing with semiconductor devices and integrated circuits of semester 4. Let us start with the unit 2 junction transistor. And the topics today we are discussing in the junction transistor of unit 2 are basics of junction transistor, biasing of NPN and PNP transistor, transistor as an amplifier. These three topics we are going to discuss now. Let us start with the bipolar junction transistor. Bipolar junction transistor are three terminal, three layer, it is having a three terminal, three layer and two junction. Uh, the junctions are P and P n. Uh, when the P and P n junction are joined together to form a, it will form a transistor. That means when a two diodes are connected together, it will form a transistor. And in the figure, we can observe the terminals in the transistor, in the bipolar transistor, uh, there are two types. One is P and P transistor, another one is N P n transistor. And in the transistor, there are three terminals. One is emitter, base and collector. And this is same in both PNP and NPN transistor. In NPN transistor, P is in middle of N to N type material. And in PNP transistor, N is in middle of 2 P type material. This is a construction of PNP and NPN transistor. This can be represented by two diode analogy like this. This is where the uh, diode which is the both the anodes are connected to the base and the cathode of one diode is emitter and the cathode of another diode is a collector. Similarly, the two diode analogy for PNP transistor is represented like this. And the two cathode terminal are connected for the base and the anode terminal is connected to emitter and another diode anode terminal is connected to collector. And the conventional current that uh, which can be represented in a transistor is shown in a symbol. This is the symbol of a transistor of PNP. Here the direction, the solid arrow mark which is showing the direction of the emitter current. This is emitter terminal, the emitter current is flowing into the, into the base. This is the difference between PNP and NPN. We can observe here, here the emitter current is flowing outward from base to emitter, it is flowing outward. So this is the main difference of PNP and NPN transistor and also we can observe the different voltages across the terminals. One is VCE that is voltage across collector and emitter is called as VCE and voltage across collector and base is VCB and voltage across emitter and base is VEB. Similarly, we can represent this in NPN transistor also. This is a physical representation of a bipolar junction transistor and this uh, bipolar junction transistor is widely used in many of the electronic appliances. I can say that it can uh, used up to a million or billion transistors which are hidden in a integrated circuits. And we can also say that without a transistor, the telecommunication is not at all possible. And transistor is making uh, the world go ahead. Next, we move on to structure of NPN transistor. How the structure of NPN transistor is? It will be having a N layer and P layer and N layer. Here, the important things is the difference in the doping level. The P will be heavy is lightly doped compared to N region. 
that is why it, it will be having a different characteristics uh, that will makes us to uh, uh, use in many applications. This and in um, NP and transistor there is two junctions we are called it as emitter base junction this emitter this is the emitter terminal and this is a base uh, terminal this two junction this emitter and base will going to make us EBJ that is emitter base junction. This junction is called as emitter base junction and another junction is collector base junction. The collector is sandwiched with the P type of base region. The N type is made with the P type region. This junction is called as collector base junction. This is structure and this is a two type of junction we are going to see in the transistor. Next we move on to very important topic that is biasing of NPN transistor. There are four basic modes of operation that is one is cutoff mode, another one is active and uh, next is saturation, the last one is reverse active. These are the four mode in which the transistor will going to operate and this four mode of operation depends on the two pn junctions of transistor. How the two, the, how the state of this two pn junction transistor is there, it will depend on this two pn junction of a transistor. The states of two pn junctions can be altered by external circuitry. When we are going to apply supply to the transistor, this two states of a pn junction will going to vary and it will going to affect the characteristics of a transistor so that the transistor will going to operate in a four different modes that is cutoff, active, saturation and reverse active. This reverse active mode will be when the reverse active mode is occurring, when the emitter base junction is reverse bias and the collector base junction is forward bias. We can see in the second quadrant when Vc is lesser than Vb and Vb is less than Vb, when this condition is satisfied, the transistor is said to be in reverse active mode. Next saturation, the saturation will occur when emitter base junction is forward biased and collector base junction is forward, both the condition is forward. This is important, uh, the transistor operating in saturation mode is called, uh, we can use the transistor as an amplifier. Whenever we are going to use a transistor in, uh, as amplifier, we are supposed to make a transistor operate in saturation mode. The saturation will fall in the first quadrant where VE is less than VB and VC the collector voltage, VC is less than VB that is base voltage. When this condition is satisfied we can say the transistor is operating in a saturation mode. Next is active, when is active mode? When the transistor uh, emitter base junction is forward biased and collector base junction is reverse biased, the transistor is said to be in a active mode and this will fall in a fourth quadrant forward active mode. When the VC is greater than collector voltage is greater than base voltage and base voltage is greater than emitter voltage, when this condition is satisfied the transistor is said to be operating in a active mode and the cutoff mode. The cutoff mode is we can say that uh, the emitter base junction in, is in a reverse bias and the collector base junction is reverse bias that is both a uh, junction will be in reverse bias and the transistor is said to be as cutoff mode. So the cutoff mode will fall in a third quadrant. So this third quadrant it has to satisfy the emitter voltage should be greater than the base voltage and the collector voltage should be greater than the base voltage. When this condition is satisfied, we can say the transistor is in cutoff mode. So we need to uh, know about transistor. The transistor will be uh, used as a switch and as well as an amplifier. When we are going to use as a switch, like uh, in a digital electronics, when you are going to use a transistor as a switch, the transistor has to uh, operate in this two mode, that is one is cutoff and another one is active. When the transistor is going to operate in this two condition, we can use the transistor as a switch. In cutoff, it is off state, in active, it is in on state. In saturation, when it will be operating in a saturation mode, we can say the transistor, we can uh, use the transistor as an amplifier. So these are the important modes of operation of a transistor. Next we move on to NPN transistor in the active mode, how the active mode will be going to 
uh, takes place what will happen inside the junction how the electrons flow inside the junction when we are going to apply an external voltage to the terminals of a diode and pn transistor we are considering uh, which will going to operate in active mode when we are going to forward bias that means when we are going to connect an external voltage that is vcc and vbb this is npn uh, transistor this is a collector terminal base terminal emitter terminal this is the output voltage this is the output voltage this is veb is output voltage and vcb is considered as a input voltage so when we are going to apply the external voltage that is vcc the co collector voltage is applied here and the base voltage is applied here what will going to happen the np region this region the emit the collector base region the collector base junction will become reverse biased and the emitter base junction will become forward biased so this condition is what we already studied uh, of active mode when the transistor has to be operating in active mode means the collector base junction has to be in reverse biased and the emitter base junction has to be in forward biased what happens means uh, when we give a external voltage this pn junction will be in forward bias injecting the electrons from the n region to p region the electron will going to diffuse from a n region to p region and here we need to note on important thing is the p region is very thin because it is lightly doped so the diffused electron will move from p region to n region some of the electron will combine with the holes but not all because there are large number of free electrons that free electron the remaining electron will move from p region to n region so this makes the 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 electron move from n region to p region will produce a current that is called as ie emitter current so when the electron the remaining free electrons move from p to n region will collected in the in n region will going to make a high electric field the, this high electric field will going to sweep the electrons backward to the sweep the electrons this free sweeping of electron will make the electrons to move from n region to p region so there is a production of uh, there is a, a current the collector current will going to produce here due to the al high electric field in a n region this will be going to produce collector current so this will produce collector current and remaining due to the base region there are some holes this holes will going to combine with the electrons in the emitter this will going to produce a base current that is ib uh, and here we can observe the current direction the uh, electron is moving the, in this direction but the current convention current is moving in this uh, we know electrons and current are always move in opposite direction this is ic and ie and ib these are the three current that we can get from npn transistor in a active mode next is a uh, what are the equation that we can get from the uh, bjt in a active mode uh, this the proportion of electrons from the emitter that make it to the base is called a collector efficiency that is alpha which is denoted as the alpha the amount of uh, electron that will make uh, it to the base that is called as collector efficiency alpha and it is equal to ic divided by ie which is mentioned here ic divided by ie which can also be written as ic is equal to alpha ie typically alpha value will be of 0.99 that node and alpha is called as common base current again we will study common base in the next uh, slide from kcl if we apply the kcl for this ie is equal to what ie is equal to ib plus ic this is what we can get so ie is equal to ib plus ic we can also write this as ib is equal to ie minus ic so substituting ic here we will get 1 minus alpha into ie so we from uh, 3 with that whenever the alpha the collector efficiency is uh, approximately equal to 1 then ib will be much much smaller than ie so we can take a short break and we will come back
Welcome back after a short break. We get uh, equation IB is equal to 1 minus alpha IE. From here, we can uh, consider that if alpha is approximately equal to 1, then IB will be much, much smaller than IE. So, this is the condition that we can observe from the this IB is equal to 1 minus alpha IE. Whenever the alpha that collector efficiency is approximately equal to 1, then IB will be much lesser than, much, much lesser than IE. Next, uh, we will get uh, another current gain, current gain that is a beta that is equal to IC is equal to IB. IC is equal to IB and IC can also be written as IC is equal to beta IB. Dividing 1 and 3, that is 1 and 3 is this 1 and 3. 1 and 3 we will get this is 1 IC is equal to alpha IE and IB is equal to 1 minus alpha IE. We will get what IC divided by IB is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha that we have written here when we divide 1 by 3. Equating this to equation 4, when we are going to equate this with the equation 4 that is when we are going to apply this uh, um, IC in uh, this equation, we will get beta is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha and solving equation for alpha we will get, we will rearrange this beta and we will get the alpha values alpha is equal to beta divided by beta plus 1 with alpha approximately equal to 0.99 that implies beta is equal to 100. So, this is the equation where that we get for a beta and alpha that is a current gain beta and the collector efficiency alpha. And once again if we are from the equation what we are going to find is for IC is equal to beta IB. Uh, the beta uh, value is large that is approximately equal to 100 we come to know that. If um, IC is equal to beta IB if we vary a small amount of IB then will be a large change in the collector that is what uh, how the transistor has to work. If we are going to change a small IB or current, there should be a large change in the collector current. So, that collector current will going to flow in a emitter terminal. This is how a transistor works with the, this equation IC is equal to beta IB. Whenever this condition is satisfied, we can say that the transistor can be operated as a, the signal is going to be amplifying. And the circuit symbol and current convention of the NPN transistor, it is shown here and the current direction IB is uh, moving towards the emitter, emit from the emit, emitter current is moving away from the emitter terminal, collector is coming inward. This is the current, uh, convention current direction and this is a circuit showing the external supply and also the current direction and the field arrow mark this will always indicate the emitter current and this is also important to note down uh, the uh, which type of transistor this current direction is inward then we can say as, as PNP if it is outward then it is we can say it as a NPN transistor. Next similar way how we are going to bias NP, PNP transistor it is almost similar in PNP the current flow is due to the holes uh, movement the holes movement going to produce a current and the applied voltage everything uh, is shown in the diagram and with the conventional current direction I is flowing inward to the PN junction and the collector current coming out from the P junction and the base current is also coming out. These are the uh, observations that we can make from biasing a PNP transistor and here the current is going to form from the holes. This is the conventional current flow in a PNP BJT. Diameter current is flowing inward and the base current is flowing out of the base, the collector current is coming out. Once again, we can write this with the external supply and this is the current convention, the which is we can observe that which is opposite to that of a PNP, NPN transistor. The PNP the transistor current direction will be exactly opposite to that of NPN transistor. And similarly, we can obtain the same equation as we have obtained from NPN transistor that is IC is equal to alpha IE. Uh, this is a collector efficiency alpha and IB is equal to 1 minus alpha IE and IC is equal to beta IB where beta is a current gain and uh, rearranging this we will get a beta is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha 
and for alpha the value uh, collector efficiency is equal to beta divided beta plus 1. And the only thing that we need to remember is for any problem solving or designing a transistor this uh, formula and also the current convention in both a transistor. And next we move on to transistor as an amplifier. How does a transistor will going to work as an amplifier? There are three different uh, configuration in a transistor. We will going to make use of different configuration and by different configuration we can use a transistor as an amplifier by making uh, arranging the transistor in a different uh, configuration. What are the configuration? The first one is common base configuration that in common base configuration we will get a voltage gain but there is no current gain. If we make a common emitter uh, configuration uh, we will get both voltage gain and as well as a current gain. And if we make a common collector configuration we will get only current gain there will be no voltage gain. These are the different uh, uh, configuration. Let us start with the one base configuration, common base configuration. In common base configuration, uh, observe from the figure, the base is common for both input and output. This is uh, the common base configuration circuit where the uh, base is common for input and base is common for output also. Here the output we are taking here from here to here the base is common. Here we are taking the input from here to here the V in voltage this with the here also the base is common. From here we can observe that R in is series with the emitter and base is common for the input and output and we can also observe that the IE the current is IE emitter current is equal to the sum of a IB current and collector current that is base current and collector current. So, the collector current is always the collector current respectively the collector current output is less than the emitter current input resulting in a current gain for this type of circuit of 1 or less because of collector current is less than the base current, less than the emitter current, we can observe that the collector current will be always less than the emitter current because I e is equal to I b plus I c. So, that we can have a gain which is less than or equal to 1 and there will be attenuation, but the signal we get in the output is of non-inverting time. This is the voltage, uh, this is the current gain that we can uh, get from a common base transistor is V out by V in is equal to I C, where V out is equal to I C into R L and V n is equal to I E into R n, R in. This is a gain of a common base transistor we can observe if the input given to the transistor common base transistor like this we will get the output amplified output but it is not inverted it is non it we can call it as a non inverting output. Next we move on to common base transistor we will move on to what are the where we are going to use a common base uh, transistor. Common base transistor are usually used in microphone pre amplifier or radio frequency amplifier due to its very good high frequency responses. Next we move on to common emitter uh, amplifier. This uh, common emitter uh, amplifier is what we studied in NPN transistor and it is a general bipolar junction transistor where we are going to make a emitter as a common for both input and as well as output. Here the emitter terminal the input is going to measure across B and E base and emitter the output is measured across collector and emitter. This is how we are going to connect emitter amplifier circuit common emitter amplifier circuit. In this common emitter amplifier configuration the input impedance is very low and uh, the output impedance is very high that is why it is making has a very good amplifier where we have a very low impedance input impedance and uh, high output uh, impedance. When we are going to give an input signal for a common emitter we will get an out uh, inverted uh, 180 degree out of phase inverted output we can observe from here. This is how we will get when we are going to give an input signal to a common emitter amplifier that is why it is works as a very good amplifier and it is also called as inverting amplifier. Uh, the equation that we can observe is as what we get from NPN uh, biasing same thing that we will uh, we will get alpha is equal to IC divided by IE 
beta is equal to I, I C divided by I B the same thing that we can rearrange this and uh, the current is we can uh, mention as I E is equal to I C plus I B. The common uh, emitter amplifier can uh, be used uh, in many applications since we will get uh, uh, 180 degree of out of phase with the input voltage and it is act as a very good amplifier. Next we move on to common collector transistor circuit. In common collector transistor circuit the collector is common and uh, this common collector transistor is also called as emitter follower or voltage follower. The emitter follower configuration is very useful for impedance matching applications because of the very high input impedance. It will be having high input impedance in the region of hundreds of thousands of ohms while having a relatively low output impedance. But it is having low output impedance and but having high input impedance. So, this circuit will be very helpful in using a uh, impedance matching circuit. Why it is called as emitter uh, follower means the output that we are going to take is from the emitter terminal that is what exactly will the will follow the emitter current. And the equation uh, we will get from the common collector transistor is IC is IB plus IC and the current gain is IE divided by IB. I, this can be we can substitute IE here. So, we, we will get IC plus IB which can be rewritten as uh, the current gain is equal to IC divided by IB. IC divided by IB means beta. So, current gain is equal to beta plus 1. So, obviously, the gain is more compared to uh, other type of transistor. This common collector transistor will have high gain. So, different configurations we studied, let us place all the things, all the characteristics in a chart and we observe what are the things. Input impedance, these are the characteristics, input impedance, output impedance, phase angle, voltage gain, current gain, power gain and across this common base, common emitter, common collector, this uh, shows that low, medium, high. For a common base it is low, the common emitter it is medium, common collector it is high. Like that we are mentioned for all different types of configuration for common base and common emitter and common collector. Till now what we are studied the BJT types, its operation uh, and PN and PNP biasing the different types of configuration and how the transistor will going to use uh, as an amplifier. This is the summary of uh, this session. The questions we can expect from this session is uh, explain biasing in NPN transistor which are the different types of BJT configuration, how does transistor work as an amplifier. For further readings you can refer uh, www.talkingelectronics.com or www.electronicstutorial and for further reading you can refer the textbook electronic devices and circuits by GK Mittal. Thank you. This ends up the session. Music